Um, are there any tips for the young writers on writing fiction and nonfiction? Well, them today? fiction is not something that I've written, though that being said, um, um, if you write anything vaguely memoir-like, I mean, they always tend to say that autobiography is fiction, I suppose there's a truth in that. I tend to wander myself in some of my own writing, so whether people choose to believe all of that or not, it's up to them. Um, tips. The main thing I would suggest is don't give up on it. If you want to do something, then do it. Proceed with it. Find a way forward, and eventually you will. I mean, I look at my own career path, if I parenthetically career path, it's been relatively successful. And at least in part, it's because I decided that I would do what I wanted to do. And so I continue to do it. So I guess that would be a, a tip for someone younger. You don't have to go off and be a lawyer or a banker or something else. And in fact, a story I will relate to that which might explain it. And I related this one again when I was in Central this morning. If you go into Central as a statue in Statue Square of a frock-coated Victorian banker called Sir Thomas Jackson, and everyone who walks around in Statue Square thinks that that's the statue of Statue Square, but actually it isn't. The original statue is one of Queen Victoria. But Jackson is of interest and it relates to writing. And how does that come, come together? Jackson was in Hong Kong for 30 odd years and then he retired and was with the Hong Kong Bank Office in London, training young bank trainees to come out to the Far East. And there was one young man who was being trained as a banker. The father was in Hong Kong in the government and the brother was already here in the police. And this young chap was destined to be a banker. And, um, but he didn't like banking and he didn't particularly like the boss and he didn't enjoy it at all. And he started writing short stories and he wrote a few and freelanced them and did reasonably well and was published in Blackwoods and a few other magazines. So he kept on going and eventually decided that he probably would be better off as a writer instead of a banker. So he stopped being a banker and became a full-time writer and it's just as well that he did because that was P.G. Woodhouse. <laughs> so the thing with this, and it's what I always say to particularly younger friends, is you don't have to be a banker, you don't have to be a lawyer, you can go off and do what you want to do and look at P.G. Woodhouse. And then they look at me and scratch their head and say, well, who is P.G. Woodhouse? And I get annoyed and throw them a couple of books and say, read that and enjoy it and learn and laugh. And they smile and say, yes, yes, and well, there we are. But yes, yeah, so that would be my advice, that if you feel you're good at something, unless you really are comprehensively proven not to be, I will, I will never be a, a threat in terms of boxing to Cassius Clay, but I enjoy it, that's fine. Um, keep going. That would be my advice. That's great advice. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, Jason. Not at all. I was just thank wondering you, if you had. Asking me. Did you have any parting words for our students, maybe where they could buy books? Or oh, my books. Oh, these ones here. Um, I don't recommend them to anybody, but if you did, if you did want to read them, um, that's being self-deprecating. Um, they're available in local bookshops, and there are a few others that are in process, and there will be another one out earlier next year. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. Thank you.